everybody and welcome back to the Girly Girl Bookworm. So today I have a winter reads TBR kind of thing. Some of these are actually like specific winter books and then some of these are not. Um, I just figured I would do a TBR. I feel like I'm going to still make monthly TBRs but I figured I would do kind of a seasonal TBR. Like I would love to get to these J December, January, February, March-ish. So, um, these are the books that I would love to possibly get to. Um, I know it's very unrealistic in terms of, I know that I will probably be getting more books in and things like that, but I just figured I would kind of throw out a mass thing of like, these are what I would love to get to. And then like when the months come, I can kind of section out what I actually want to be reading. But these are things that I think I want to be reading anyways. So three books that are kind of a spoiler to a upcoming haul for December. Um... Obviously, I would love to get to The Wives by Taryn Fisher. I would love to get to this this month because I've heard so much buzz about it, but I haven't gotten to it yet just because I've been so slow at reading. Like, I feel like on my shelf right now, there are so many books that I want to read that it's hard to prioritize which one gets to come first, but definitely want to read this soon. I'm currently reading a arc, and I have a feeling that when that arc is done, I'm going to want to pick this up. We'll see, though. Things change. Um, then I would also like to get to Fountains of Silence by Rudis the Pettis. This, this winter, um, I just showed in my winter recommendations video two of her other books, and I've read uh, the easy, so I've read everything she's written except for this one. This one takes place in Spain, I believe. Um, I'm not sure the time frame. This is 1957. So I don't know too much about it, but I figured that because I don't know too much about this time period and this country that it would be a really good thing to try out. So I feel like this would be a really good winter read because I feel like I really like historical fiction in the winter because you can just like kind of cozy in and like learn and get to know new things and you're not really looking for the fast pace like you are in the summer. So this could be good. I also like to read a lot of fantasy and things like that in the summer, in the, not the summer, in the winter. So I'm interested in this one. I ended up buying this one from somebody off of the internet <laughs> um, because I was too scared it wasn't going to be there when I got to make my next book of the month purchase slash I was like nobody was willing to trade for it because I had nothing good to trade for it. Um, and I just like figured I would free up one of my choices anyways on Book of the Month. So I ended up buying it off somebody for like 10 bucks, and, and I got Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Um, I'm nervous for this because I've heard mixed things, but I'm intrigued. And it takes place at Yale, and Yale is in Connecticut, and I live in Connecticut. So I feel like I kind of just need to at least like give it a shot. Um, so yeah, fantasy. I would love to get to that one. Um, and then, like I said, with some historical fiction, I've got City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. I just got this last month. I'm really intrigued for this one. I just feel like this is going to be really awesome, and I would hate for this to sit on my shelf for a really long time. It takes place in the 1940s, and I've, heard, like I said, I've heard really phenomenal things about it and want to get to it. Um, time travel novel. Time After Time by Lisa Grunwald. This almost looks like snow on the bottom, so I'm curious if this takes place in a wintry time frame. Um, but it just sounds really good. It's in the 1920s and um, the Depression and World War II. It just, it sounds like it's going to be phenomenal, and I think that this would be a really great time of year to get to it. Um, some other random books I'd like to get to. I'd like to get to... Making Faces by Amy Harmon. Um, this book was gifted to me by Shelby from Shelby Taggart Reads. Um, she said that this one, book is phenomenal, so I definitely want to get to this one sooner rather than later. The fact that it's, like, I got it for my birthday, and the fact that it's still sitting on my shelf is kind of driving me crazy, even though my birthday wasn't that long ago. I definitely want to get to this one ASAP. Um, then The Hardest Fall by Ella Mays. Um, it's a football romance, and wintry times of football and Super Bowls and things like that. So I definitely want to get to this one before the Super Bowl because if I don't, I feel like it's going to sit on my shelf until the fall. So we'll have to see. 
Sorry about that. She didn't stop barking, so I stopped the video until she stopped barking. Um, so let's continue really quick before she discovers another squirrel. Um, so I would also like to get to The Farm by Joanne Ramos. I've been wanting to read this since I got it for my birthday as well, but I feel like with all the other readathons and things like that, this didn't fit in anywhere. So I definitely feel like I want to get to this sooner rather than later. Um, just because I feel like this kind of has almost like the same vibes of dystopian and things like that. And I feel like after reading The Gracier, I really am all for that. Like I'm even contemplating reading The Handmaid's Tale, which I've never contemplated ever in my life. So I feel like this is something that I want to read like ASAP. Basically, I want to read all of these ASAP, which makes it so difficult. <laughs> um, I would like to read Breeding Down the Duke by Evie Dunsmore. Done more. This just sounds like a book that I would want to read during the winter. I don't even know if it has anything to do with winter, but it's a regional, like, romance. Um, not regional. That's not what that's called. Like, a Regency romance. Um, so I feel like that just sounds like a very, like, let's sit by the fire and read kind of book. So I would like to get to this one. Um, this one I know I'm going to get to because I feel like, again, this is another one that, like, I'm going to read ASAP this month. It's, like, bypassing a lot of my TBR, and that is, um, The One You Fight For by Ronnie Lauren. Book four comes out at the end of the year, at the end of this year, so I definitely want to pick this up so I can be ready for that one. Um, one of my most favorite romance series, probably, like, in the top five romance series that I've read, um, as of lately, and, I cannot wait to continue on with this series, so definitely picking this one up. I'm not going to talk too much more about it because I feel like I've been gushing about the other two books in my last few videos, so definitely one of my favorite series. Definitely check that author out if you haven't already. And then there is The Glittering Hour by Ayana um, Gray, another book of the month spoiler for you, which I didn't think about. <laughs> um, this book takes place... Um, before World War II, and when I looked at, when I, like, opened it up, the, um, prologue takes place in February, and then chapter one takes place in January, so my prediction is that this will be a good book to read in the winter, and so we'll see. Um, the cover is absolutely stunning, so I don't know too much about it. I kind of just bought this blindly off a of book of the month this month. This is one of the choices and I was just like, must have, thank you. And I didn't really look too much about it. So I'm hoping that it's really good. We'll have to see. This book I always equate with winter. I have no idea if this has anything to do with winter, but for some reason this cover screams winter to me. And that is The Necklace by Claire McMillan. Um, I have no idea what it's about other than I think that it's about this family and they find this necklace that was in their, um, oh, somebody's just waking up, um, that they found in their family, like, heirloom collection, and I have, and now they're fighting over it. This cover screams winter. I have no idea if this takes place in winter. If you know, please let me know, because I want to read this during the right time period, but it just screams winter to me, and I kind of want to read it, so we'll see. Did you wake up? You have nice dreams? Hehe. <laughs> Um, then I would also like to get to The City Baker's Guide to Country Living by Louise Miller because look at this cover. It's beautiful. It screams winter. It's about cooking. It's in Vermont. Apparently there's a dog. I need this ASAP. So I'm probably going to read this like January, February for sure. Um, this one is just because I want to be caught up with her books before her newest book comes out, so I would like to read The Marriage Life by Kimberly Bell. Not really wintry, just want to read it. Um, I have a feeling that this one I'm going to make it a winter read, and that is Sleep by C.L. Taylor. This takes place on an island. Um, uh, if you watched my winter recommendations video, I talked about how I really like, like, closed-in mysteries during the winter time. And I believe that this takes place on an island where she kind of opens up a, like, hotel type of place. And she has guests and they all start to die. So, that just sounds like a perfect read to read in the wintertime. This book probably should be a Halloween read, but I feel like I need to read it, like, sooner rather than later. And that is Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. I did not really like, um 
the um, Perks of Being a Wallflower, but I read a preview of this book um, on Goodreads, and I was just, like, sucked in and was like, I really want to find out what happens. So, even if it's Halloween-y, I think it might be a perfect book for the winter, especially because it's huge. This looks like winter on the cover, so Broken Girls by Simone St. James. I also would just like to read this before the Sundown Motel comes out, um, so that's my main reason why I would like to read this in the winter. Some YA novels um, I pulled out, some more fantasy. They have nothing to do with winter, but if you watched, like I said, my winter recommendations video, I talked about how I feel like fantasy is definitely a good thing to read in the winter, and I just kind of talked about that briefly when I pulled out Ninth House. So I would like to try to get to Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow, because I feel like this is going to be really good. I heard that it's very, like, Harry Potter-ish, um... And I feel like I was so excited to get this, and then it sat on my shelf, and I feel like if it continues to sit on my shelf, I'm not going to read it. So I feel like I need to at least attempt to read it this winter. We'll see. Um, in my last video, I also talked about um, this author, and this is Sherwood by Megan Spooner. She's the one that wrote, and literally just talked about it. This is what happens when you film like 10 videos in one day. You're like hunted. You start forgetting everything. Um, but, like, this book just looks like you should read it in the winter. It's a Robin Hood retelling. And I just wanted to try it because I had it pre-ordered and then I never read it. And I just thought of another book. I just thought of another book. The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. I pre-ordered this last winter and I didn't read it. And it's got snow on the cover. So I saved it for the next winter and then forgot to grab it just now. Go me. This is about a hunting party. Someone dies. Everyone's a suspect. Who did it? Kingdom of Souls by Rena Barron. I've talked about this book nonstop. Still haven't picked it up because all the readathons keep getting in my way. So hopefully this winter I will pick it up finally. Then I would also like to pick up House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig. This just looks very wintry. It's probably not wintry at all. It's a 12 Dancing Princesses retelling, except the princesses are coming up dead. Sounds fun. And then I pulled out all my nonfiction pretty much because I don't know what I want to read, but I know I want to read a ton of non nonfiction, which is so not like me. But I want to do it, so I'm going to. So I've got The Great Pretender by Susan um, Callahan. Um, I always say her name wrong. It's probably not that. Um, but it says, in 1973, a charismatic doctor convinced eight healthy people to commit themselves to mental hospitals. They had to prove their sanity to be set free. Their undercover mission would change our understanding of madness forever. Educated by Tara Westover. I am the last person on the planet to read this, so I need to. <coughs> American Predator, The Hunt for the Most Meticulous Serial Killer on the 21st Century by Marie Maureen Callahan. That's actually how you spell Callahan. I don't know what the other person's name is. But this even looks like a winter scene on the cover. Because it looks like snow tracks. So this could be perfect. And then I would really like to get to my friend Anna. I just literally spoiled all of my Book of the Month picks this month. But guess what? I already spoiled them on my Instagram, so I guess it's not that big of a deal. If you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen them. But this is my friend Anna. Um, this is about a woman who pretends to be rich, takes a girl on vacation, and then the girl finds out that her friend was making it up the whole time. Sounds fantastic. Those are all the books that I would like to get to this winter. Like I said, some of them are wintry, some of them are not. I'm sure I probably won't get to half of these because I'm sure other books are going to, like, show their face and I'm going to want to read them. We'll see. What are you reading this winter down below? Let me know down below. Let me know if you know anything about any of these books, if there's any books that I need to prioritize. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, everybody.